Well, folks, uh, here we are. It's six months into 2020. I can't believe it. And uh, to summarize this entire scenario that we've been over uh, uh, experiencing over the last few months, I'm pleased to be joined by uh, Richard Carlton, the CEO of the Canadian Securities Exchange. Richard, welcome today to our five things discussion about what's happened. We're going to try to synthesize everything that's happened over the last five months uh, in our world. So uh, first of all, how are things? How are you doing? Everything's good. Uh, spending uh, four days a week up in the Collingwood area and uh, in the office at least uh, one day uh, through the week. Um, downtown Toronto is still a bit of a ghost town, and uh, yet the uh, team morale is excellent. And uh, obviously, as we'll get into in greater detail in the conversation, um, things are going very well for the exchange and the equity markets in general. Sure. So let's maybe touch on how the CSC has adapted during these last uh, few months and specifically, you know, that inflection point in early March when uh, it really was evident that the world was changing in real time. How did we, uh, how did we navigate that early on? Well, for me, the uh, start of the uh, COVID event will always be tied up with uh, the PDAC conference in uh, Toronto. Um, a number of us obviously uh, attended the conference. Uh, we had a booth. Uh, we went to the social engagements uh, around the business meetings, uh, our famous issuer lunch. And when it became apparent that uh, a number of people had contracted the virus uh, at the show, uh, a number of us put ourselves into self-isolation uh, a week before the lockdown orders uh, went into place uh, in, uh, in Ontario. Now, of course, the securities markets uh, were declared an essential service. Uh, so what that meant for us was we had to dust off our disaster recovery, uh, our resilience plans, uh, which meant that we were able to distribute uh, responsibilities for market operations, uh, technical support, obviously our trading and listings regulation teams. And uh, within a short period of days, uh, we were basically conducting a business of the exchange uh, through a vast network of uh, video calls, uh, telephone meetings, uh, and uh, a great deal of uh, uh, initiative uh, from the team at the Canadian Securities Exchange. Right. And, and a big part of what we do is obviously on the trading front. And what we saw in early March, late March even, was uh, really, really intense volatility. How did we navigate that? And what have we seen uh, since then in the market as far as trading is concerned? Well, it, it was interesting, obviously, because um, uh, we have the benefit in North America of uh, seeing what's gone on in Asia and uh, Europe uh, before our markets open. So we were able to anticipate uh, a number of the days in which there were market breaks in, uh, in late March. And uh, uh, as I've mentioned on a few occasions, uh, a lot of our team has been with us since the global financial crisis. So we knew what to look for. Uh, we knew what the protocols uh, were around uh, market-wide halts and so on. And uh, I'm pleased to say that we were able to anticipate uh, most of the issues that, uh, that came up. Uh, the trading system uh, performed admirably uh, throughout that uh, period of uh, volatility. And uh, we're, as I say, then through the rebound uh, at the end of March into uh, early April, uh, we saw more trading volume as opposed to just uh, uh, a lot of message traffic. And uh, really, uh, trading volumes have been very healthy uh, since then as uh, markets have continued to recover. Right. And, and I think what's been a surprise from our end and what we've observed were the record number of financings from the issuer base listed on CSC. And, uh, you know, talking, I remember back in early March going, wow, what impact is this going to have? I didn't think four months later, we'd be looking at a record amount of transactions uh, through the first half of the year. And uh, obviously, a lot of that happening over the last few months. So can you just address, you know, maybe what's different about that level of financing that we're seeing on the exchange? Yeah, uh, what we're seeing is, a, I guess, a change uh, in the uh, sectors that are driving uh, the corporate finance activity uh, over the last uh, two to three months. Um, you know, obviously, March and April were a little slow from a corporate finance perspective. Um, a lot of uncertainty in the markets, and it's no surprise that... Uh, investors were um, a little skittish around uh, supporting new offerings. But since then, uh, we've seen a large number of uh, mining exploration companies, um, companies that are uh, in the health sciences and health tech space, other technology uh, type stories. 
And those companies tend to not have to raise the large amounts of money that, for example, the U.S. multi-state uh, cannabis operators uh, did. Um, our largest uh, raise this year so far is still that of uh, Cureleaf, which was a 300 million U.S. Uh, offering that was completed in January. But what we have seen is uh, probably 20 to 25 percent higher corporate finance activity in terms of the numbers of deals. But the absolute dollars are down a little bit from where we were last year. But as you mentioned, uh, the velocity of transactions uh, is at a record level, and we have no reason to believe that that's going to change uh, anytime soon, even though uh, we're obviously approaching the dog days of summer. Uh, things are still very active. Right. And when you look at how you continue to build an exchange business in the face of continued pressure by the pandemic, uh, we're certainly not over the hump, uh, as, as the news is telling us. How do we continue to build this business in this environment? Because this is this is going to be for the long haul, I can only assume. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, we obviously um, had a very, very large travel budget uh, as we uh, got out uh, literally around the world. Uh, to meet with uh, uh, prospective investors and companies that might want to access the Canadian uh, public venture capital markets uh, for, uh, for for growth capital. And uh, those were very successful activities that we've undertaken over the last few years. But uh, we've obviously had to change that to all sorts of different uh, uh, remote techniques, uh, leaning very heavily on uh, different social media platforms uh, to develop that kind of engagement uh, with investors and uh, potential uh, uh, companies to, to list on the exchange. So we have uh, uh, developed a whole series of, uh, of uh, programs uh, that we use uh, or put out on Instagram television. We now have our own YouTube channel uh, that is approaching 1,000 subscribers. And uh, weekly content, uh, Mining Mondays, Tech Tuesdays, West Coast Wednesdays, um, as we say, Thursday and Friday are still up for grabs. <laughs> uh, but uh, we have uh, 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 content that's going out, new content that's going out just about every day that is of interest to investors and entrepreneurs uh, that may want to uh, work with us in the future. Yeah, it's certainly a muscle you have to continue to build in in the on oncoming days in the uh, in the face of what we're facing. Um, let's just talk about then what's coming up. So we're halfway through the year. This is this is time to look back, but it's also time to look forward. And perhaps just share with us what you're looking forward to, uh, you know, working on over the next six months and potentially, uh, you know, unleashing on the world as uh, we continue to not just sit here and react, but actually be proactive about how we build this this business. Yeah, I guess there are a couple of things. I mean, people ask us uh, all the time, uh, well, you know, when are you guys going to be reopened and when are you getting back to business and all of that? Well, of course, the reality is we, we've we been in business without interruption uh, throughout the course of the entire pandemic and, and processing uh, records, uh, record amounts of, uh, of message traffic and trading volume through the systems, uh, as well as uh, being extremely busy. Uh, you know, not just in our uh, business development activities, but uh, also in the number of applications that we've received to list and, and, and so on. So, so that pipeline continues to look strong. Uh, so we're going to be, I think, uh, quite buoyant uh, as far forward as we can see uh, into the fall. Um, we're also working on another very exciting project uh, uh, with regulators at the BC and the Ontario Securities Commissions. Uh, as we've discussed uh, um and a few forums uh, over the last little bit, we'll be launching a senior tier of the exchange. So roughly 60 or 70 of our companies uh, will be subject to the so-called non-venture issuer uh, rules under the Ontario and British Columbia Securities Acts. Um, what that means is that the companies will basically be regulated by us and the regulators as the bigger companies that in fact they are. Um, when the CSE was originally launched, it was conceived as a so-called uh, venture issuer market. And uh, clearly, the success that we've had uh, in a number of different uh, industry sectors means that uh, our clients, uh, the issuers, have grown up, succeeded, and uh, now are companies with uh, enterprise values uh, measured in the billions of dollars. And so they deserve to be regulated in a framework that uh, matches uh, uh how companies are regulated on other senior exchanges uh, in, in Canada. The other benefit uh, for uh, the Canadian Securities Exchange is that we will 
Also, as part of this uh, program, uh, have the capability of listing special purpose acquisition corporations, uh, which is a very popular vehicle uh, for uh, capital to be raised in the United States and uh, is starting to catch on in Canada. We will also be in a position to list ETFs, and uh, we hope to work with some of the ETF manufacturers uh, to attract uh, those uh, instruments uh, to the exchange. And uh, if you want to take a deep dive into micro market structure, uh, we also expect to obtain margin eligibility for stocks that meet the price tests uh, under the IROC rules. That has the opportunity to cut costs for dealers who are trading on the CSE. It should also reduce the cost of capital for issuers who are in the margin eligible category um, when they uh, when they go to raise significant amounts of money. So win 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 situation uh, throughout. Um, that's been a huge effort and involving a big chunk of the organization in developing that new rule book. And as I mentioned, we're currently working with the regulators to get to a position which we hope is not too far off uh, where these rules will be published for public comment and uh, implementation uh, later on. Wonderful. Well, Richard, thanks so much for sharing all that. Uh, if you're watching today on YouTube or LinkedIn, just know that there's more. There is actually a full deep dive Q&A with Richard Carlton on the blog at uh, blog.thecse.com. That's our blog. blog. I'll put the link below. <laughs> but uh, also, like, make sure you don't miss more of these videos. We have a subscribe button right below. Uh, as Richard mentioned, we're almost at 1,000. We want you to join uh, new interviews almost every day now with CEOs and thought leaders in the capital markets. So come join our capital markets community and, uh, and hear from folks all across the issuer base to investment advisors, professionals, and the system. Whoever you want to hear from, we're going to bring them to the table. Uh, as we've mentioned, we're not going to stop this digital onslaught. It's uh, it's the way we got to do business. So uh, needless to say, thank you, Richard. Thank you for uh, guiding us through this uh, very turbulent last four months. And I uh, certainly look forward to the rest of the year. As CSE approaches its 16th birthday as an exchange, uh, we're, we're excited to bring more people along for the ride, especially if we get the senior tier designation. So uh, once again, thanks for watching. I'm James Black. I'm with the Canadian Securities Exchange. That was Richard Carlton. And we'll see you on the next one. All the best. Thank you very much.